Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to discuss about ammunition, the various types of ammunition, what ammunition contain that is the propellant, primer, wad, rim, projectile, so all these things will be discussed in this video. So before starting, I would really like to request you all to like this video, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon. Also, you can join my telegram link if you want. I'll be updating every each and every video there. So uh, the description box is having the link for the telegram group. If you want, you can join the group. So let's start. Ammunition. Ammunition is the material that is fired, scattered, dropped or detonated from any weapon. Now generally in layman terms, we think that bullet is the one that is fired. But in scientific terms, it is ammunition and ammunition contains the bullet along with many other materials such as cartridge case. The ammunition entirely is made up of cartridge case. It Inside the ammunition, there is propellant, primer, projectile, wad rim. All these things together constitute ammunition, which is the material that is fired or scattered or dropped or detonated from any weapon which could be uh, any kind of firearm. Example of ammunition also includes bombs, missiles, grenades also as these are also things that can be fired, scattered, dropped or detonated. So these are also examples of ammunition only. So here these two pictures are showing us ammunition and as you can see that there are different parts of ammunition the bullet itself is is just one part of ammunition here this is the bullet region other than this there is cartridge case the outer case this is the cartridge case then there's gunpowder there's primer there's rim all these things contain or are contained in the ammunition Next, we can talk about the types of ammunition. So, the small arm ammunition are basically of two types. It can either be metallic ammunition or it can be shotgun ammunition. Now, this these uh, have been classified on the basis of what kind of material is used to make the shell case, the casing. So, in metallic ammunition, the shell case is made up of metal. Hence, the name is metallic ammunition. And in case of shotgun ammunition, the shell case is not made up of metal. It is either made up of paper or it is made up of plastic. So, on the basis of uh, what the shell case is made up of, ammunition can be of two types, metallic and shotgun ammunition. Now, components of metallic uh, cartridge or ammunition includes, first of all, the cartridge case, which is, of course, made up of metal. This can be shell or empty. Then there is a percussion cap or primer. Then there is propellant and the bullet. In cases of shotgun, we have cartridge case is made up of either plastic or paper. And it can also be shell or empty. Then there is percussion cap just like metallic cartridge only. This propellant. There's, but instead of a bullet, in case of shotgun, we have spherical balls or lead pallets. A shotgun, the projectile that is used in shotgun is pallets. All right, lead pallets are used. But in case of other guns like rifles or um, revolver or pistols, the projectile that is used is bullet. So till now we have studied different components of the metallic cartilage, cartridge and the shotgun cartridges. So now we study different parts of the ammunition. First part is propellant. Propellant fills the interior of an ammunition cartridge leading to the expulsion of a bullet or shell. So propellant is the part that is responsible for the expulsion of bullet or shell out from the cartridge case now in order to propel or push a bullet out or push a shotgun pallet out from the barrel what we need is some amount of force and how do we get this force we get this force by igniting a primer here see in this picture we have bullet over here right this is the bullet region other than this we have a powder charge over here powder charge is present 
over here also this is all propellant this is what it is propellant and we have a primer here this primer gets ignited by the firing pin this primer once it gets ignited in it in turns lead to the combustion of the propellant material all right so once this propellant material gets ignited what happens is that there is quick release of gas a lot of gas is released which leads to increased pressure inside the cartridge case now this increase in pressure ultimately leads to the forcing the bullet to get out from the barrel and this is how the bullet leaves the cartridge case and then travels it travels through the barrel and finally leaves the barrel too now the three types of propellants that are used there are three types of propellant first is gunpowder second is smokeless powder and third is semi smokeless powder so let's study them one by one gunpowder gunpowder is also known as black powder it is a mixture of three main substances first is potassium nitrate which is also known as saltpeter second is sulfur and third is charcoal and all of these three substances are present in definite proportions potassium nitrate is present in 75% then sulfur is present in 10% amount and charcoal is present in 15% so the present in the ratio of 75 is to 10 is to 15 wherein 75 is potassium nitrate 10 is sulfur and 15 is charcoal just remember that gunpowder is composed of all these thing and remember the percentage of each and every component then the gunpowder is the oldest recorded propellant so this is the oldest propellant and it was just invented by the chinese in around the 10th century let's study now the grading of gunpowder grading can be divided into two categories either it can be f grading or c grading c grading uh, is used for cannons and large capacity explosive devices here we are studying firearms so for firearms it is the f grading that we do the letter f stands for fine the, these are the four gradings the grading can be fg it can be ffg it can be fffg and it can be fffg so the more number of fs are there that is the finer it is so more f means finer gunpowder so if it is like for example fg so fg is used for large bore rifles so since there oh, there's only one f so what does that mean that means that the gunpowder is not that fine so it can so it is used for the large bore rifles similarly if we talk about f f f f g that means it is very very fine gunpowder see here in the picture so here in this case this is not much fine a, a bit more finer than this one and this is how the uh, in this direction the fineness of the gunpowder is increasing all right so here if uh, if it is very fine there are four fs in this case so that means it it is supposed to be used for pistols that are very short because the sh uh, shorter the substance is shorter the firearm is the more finer uh, propellant we are going to need so the more grading the more graded gunpowder we are going to need so on the basis of that different um, different types of weapons are going to need different graded gunpowder next we come to smokeless powder smokeless is the uh, smokeless powder as the word is suggesting it means that it is not going to produce any kind of smoke so the basic components of the smokeless powder are nitroglycerin and nitrocellulose nitrocellulose is also known as gun cotton now smokeless powder can be of two type it can either be single base or it can be double base if we talk about single base then single base contain only nitrocellulose and 
double base if talk about double base smokeless powder then that contains nitrocellulose also along with that there is nitroglycerin also so nitrocellulose is either used alone or in combination with nitroglycerin to form propellant now later one is called double base powder uh, because two uh, substances are used while the former one in which only nitrocellulose is used is known as single base powder then there is another category called semi smokeless powder semi smokeless produce smoke but not as much as gunpowder and not even that little as smokeless powder then um, this is this one is a mixture of black powder and nitrocellulose now the proportion is that there is nitrated wood cellulose or nitrocellulose in the proportion 20% in the percentage 20 percent then potassium nitrate is 60 percent carbon is 12 percent and sulfur is 8 percent so semi smokeless powder is like the hybrid of smokeless powder and the gunpowder then comes the primer the primer is the chemical or a device that is responsible for initiating the propellant combustion that will push the projectile out of the gun barrel so I, as i have told you guys in this picture here this portion is the primer that is responsible for that first itself gets ignited and then it leads to the ignition of this entire gun powder or the propellant also all right so it is a chemical or a device that is responsible for initiating the propellant combustion now it is a high explosive substance that is it has a tendency to explode at very high intensity if only primer is ignited in a very large quantity the sensitive high explosive which functions as an initiator is pressure sensitive now primer is it is very sensitive it is pressure sensitive so it can even be uh, ignited just by applying pressure and it gives out flame to ignite the combustible material the combustible material is is the propellant so it gives out a flame in order to uh, ignite the combustible material so the primer's main purpose is to ignite the propellant so that the gases are produced and so that the bullet is ejected out now remember this name James Forsyth, he discovered a shock sensitive explosive called mercury fulminate. James Forsyth, who was a Scottish clergyman, he discovered this shock sensitive explosive which is called mercury fulminate and whose chemical formula is HGONC hold twice. Now, Examples of other examples of primer include lead stiffenate, mercury fulminate, tetrazine, lead azide, antimony sulfide, barium nitrate. Just remember all these names and remember this scientist who discovered mercury fulminate. Then next comes the wad. Wad refers to a small disc of material that separates the powder from the lead shot. So here see in this picture these are the lead shots and this is the powder and in between here this area is the wad. So what is wad doing? It is simply separating the pellets from the powder that is present over here. So it is like a separation between them. It is pushed down the barrel behind the shot when the powder is ignited by the primer. It is pushed down along with all these bullets, VAD is also pushed down through the barrel. So if this is the direction, then along with the pellets, VAD will also be moving in that particular direction. The VAD creates a seal to help the pressure reach an adequate level used to push these so uh, shots out of the cartridge. Then there are different types of VAD which can be overpowered VAD, cushion VAD, undershot VAD and overshot VAD. Now 
if we talk about the rim so rim is like a material that provides the extractor extractor as i told in the introduction to ballistic and the parts of uh, firearm video i told that extractor is any substance that helps for the removal of all the um, metal cases that are left once the bullet has ejected out from the metal case so extractor is that part that helps us remove the metal casing because we need to you know load another ammunition so the ammunition the metal case that is left behind for the previous one has to be removed so extractor removes that so this rim it provides the extractor on the firearm a place to grip rim helps the extractor to have a grip over the casing in order to remove it from the chamber once the bullet has been fired now the ammunition can be of five main types on the basis of the rim if the rim is present if the rim is absent how the rim is present so on the basis of that ammunition can be of several types first is rimmed in this type of ammunition the rim is significantly larger in diameter than the base of the cartridge so look here in this picture this portion this is the diameter this much is the diameter of the ammunition but you can see that rim is extended out so this is a rimmed ammunition in which the diameter of the rim is more than the diameter of the cartridge then second comes rimless in which the diameter of the cartridge is same as the diameter of the ring rim so this and this is equal all right so this means that it is rimless it is also known as extractor groove then third comes semi rimmed in this the rim projects slightly beyond the base of the case though not as much as rimmed cartridge so semi rimmed is just like rimmed but it is not that uh, outwards it is somehow more than the cartridge uh, sorry the diameter of the cartridge but not as much as it was in the rimmed case then comes rebated rim a rim that is significantly smaller in diameter than the base of the case now this one is even smaller than this diameter this is even smaller than this diameter so that is the rebated one then comes the belted the purpose of the belt belted the purpose of the belt on the belted case is to provide head spacing the extractor groove is cut into the belt just as it is cut into the case head on a rimless case so this one is the belted uh, ammunition so these were the five different types of ammunition based on rim that is present or it is absent or how the rim is present so this was all about this video i hope that you understood what ammunition is what are the different types of ammunition and what are the different components of ammunition if you found the video to be useful then please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and do share it with your friends also in order to get updated on all the videos do not forget to join the telegram group i have provided the link in the description box thank you